that I wanted to tell you what I was teaching next year and I wanted to tell you that I was moving. And I love you. Do you want to see my school? Yes. Okay. <laughs> nice job. Nice and careful. Good. That's how ours came out. I am obsessed. Get serious. Daddy got serious. You pranked us with an airplane ticket a long time ago, so I don't know how you're going to do that again. Hi, sweet friend. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Maylene Call from Mrs. Call's Campers. If you're new here, I am currently a kinder and first grade teacher in Northern California. Make sure you catch up on my vlogs because I've announced some pretty big things over the past few vlogs. One of them being that I am going to be a first grade teacher next year when my husband and I move to Vegas. So all feels good and right in the world. I walked in this morning with just such a sense of lightness. Like it just feels so good so let's see this weekend was actually a pretty good weekend i worked a lot on my sourdough bread that i've been laboring over and i unfortunately was up until like 1 a.m last night um, because i am new to the whole sourdough making process and i messed up the time schedule <laughs> so there is that i also don't think my loaf is going to come out very well i will insert a clip of how it ends up coming out when i bake it today but it just i don't think the dough really felt right so we will see we cannot get too far <laughs> without our cheers this morning today is cookie butter monday it's actually iced cookie butter monday for me also this weekend kenzie came over and we did a lot of planning for the end of the year we really only have a short amount of time left um kenzie teaches second grade she's teacups of teaching on instagram i taught with her last year but we only have a small amount of time left so we were just bouncing ideas off of each other left and right and i know i filmed in the past when we got together you can watch that video right up here but i didn't want to film anything yesterday i just wanted to plan and do it and not have to worry about like turning a camera on every time we started a conversation so we just planned together um, and we were really really productive which is nice I love that I have someone like her who I can sit down and we just really like vibe off of each other's ideas and can help each other so this week what are we doing we are doing oh my gosh one of my favorite 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 read alouds this week we're reading dandy we're also going to be reading the bad seed on Friday and we're gonna be planting sunflower seeds. I let my kids take these home and they send me pictures of them blooming all summer and it's one of the most just magical traditions that I do with my kids. So I'm really excited to start that. We are doing still some writing. When they finish this personal narrative, we are going to start a different kind of writing. I'm not really sure what I want to do yet. We will see. And other than that, we are starting shapes this week. So you're going to see lots of fun new things. It's time for me to get ready for my day. So what I need to do, usually on Monday mornings, if I don't do it the week before, which I'm not, I've not been good at, <laughs> just being honest with you, my goal for next year, I know what I'm going to be teaching next year, is to get more back in my schedule. My first year of teaching, I had such a good schedule, but it was also because I collaborated with the team every single week. So we were all helping each other. We planned on a certain day, then we were able to prep on a certain day so my goal for next year is to get back to that but for now I'm printing what I need this week this morning what a Monday what a Monday I told my kids that I am teaching first grade next year and then I'm moving to a new school in a new state my first year teaching I had to tell them that I was moving and it was awful and I remember it being so sad and last year was also super super sad I thought that I would try to make it a little bit more fun so I kind of hyped it up and I was like oh you're gonna like figure out what Miss Call is teaching next and I had them do a little word scramble in their groups to figure it out so each group had like a part of the puzzle and then I had them read out their puzzle and then as soon as they heard that I was moving it was like oh it was so sad and then I was like okay we'll talk about it and, and like it'll help them feel better but they just started crying emotionally I am absolutely exhausted I had planned today to just review what we had for math last week but I just decided it was not fair to them for us to do like a hey, full oh. meeting be okay meeting is over talked about math they talked about like reading groups and switching and it's always so interesting to hear because I've been at different schools now the school I was at my first year I feel like they had a really good just system set in place for 
the teachers and for, you know, reading and intervention and all of those things. I feel like they had a really, really good system set in place and they were a larger school. This school I'm at now is smaller, so it's interesting to hear the way that smaller schools kind of approach these kinds of topics and how they just talk about them. And a lot of times in those meetings, I have opinions about things, but I don't, and I know, I feel like this is still because I'm someone who is in a new environment, in a new setting, but I have a lot of opinions about things and I'm like, I don't feel like I'm comfortable enough to step in and say, well, you know, I, this is what I've experienced and it's worked really well because it's just totally off. Like they would have no idea what I'm even talking about. So I do see it as a benefit to me being in this many different schools to so seeing the structures of different schools. You can see what works, what doesn't work, what teachers struggle with because of certain things that are in place or not in place. It's all very interesting. And I feel like it's broadened my perspective at, of education as a whole. So really eye-opening. Today was so hard because I told my kids like at the beginning of the day, oh, I have an announcement to make for you guys. And they were excited about it. And it's an exciting thing for me because this school that I'm going to, I am so thrilled. I am just absolutely thrilled. I cannot wait to tell you guys more about it. I seriously just think big things are ahead for me, so I'm very excited. I had them all in their group, so it was a mix of first grade and kindergarten mixed abilities, and I gave them each a chunk of the puzzle to unscramble. So they each had a couple of words. Some of them needed more help than others, but for example, the word first grade, I put first in a pile and I put grade in a pile and this is all they decoded. So I had them like working around and it was fun because I could say, oh, a secret's in that word or oh, like, this is in that word and they would figure it out. So they started unscrambling their words and each group had a section of the puzzle. And then when they all were done, I went to each group and I said, okay, say it out loud. Like say the part of the puzzle that you got. And the first one, the first group had Mrs. Call is moving. And after it was just, it was sad instantly because they were like, wait, what's going on? And granted, they didn't know like, is she moving now? Is she moving later? So Miss Call is moving. And then it was to a new state and I could have planned this phrase better I think because then they were really really upset and then the other group and then the other group had and she will be teaching and then first grade was the last one so they were excited about first grade and then they went back to wait a second she's moving and so it was just all very emotional and sad and people were crying and we went on the carpet and we talked about it and I made sure to let them know like how much I care for them how much I love them how you know their parents will always have my phone number I'm gonna call them before their first day of school next year we're gonna do teacher meetups this month and next month kind of like how I've done pizza party in the park or doing breakfast with your teacher at IHOP I might actually do both of those ideas because I love them both but I love at the end of the year even the beginning of the year I think I need to make more of an effort to to do it but it's just so hard because people don't quite know you yet and the kids are <laughs> extra shy so having an event with your teacher outside of school at the beginning of the year is it's a little hard because the kids are still really shy so I think it's better once you have those relationships but anyway their parents will have my phone number a lot of them follow me on social media so they'll always be able to reach me but it's just one of those things that like it just breaks their hearts and they cried a lot <laughs> and I felt terrible and I was crying and I even showed them the school I'm going to the school has like a little I call it like a hype video <laughs> on their front page of the school and like it shows them the school and they got really excited to hear about that and then when the video was over they were sad again because they just kept thinking about me leaving okay so you guys know that this is my first year at this school right yes and I got to be a kindergarten teacher Yes. And, and a first, first grade, grade teacher, teacher right? Yes. So, yes. so that's going to be every year. Not, so. not every year. <laughs> it only happens some years. Yeah, I'm going to have you figure school. out what I'm teaching next year. Are you excited? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Okay. Every group is going to get some letters, and you're going to have to figure out what words the letters make. Each of you is going to get a separate part, and once you unscramble your part, you make the secret words, then we'll put the whole puzzle together to see. So I want you to shout out what your word is. No, no it's going to be a surprise for everybody. everybody. So when you figure it out, keep it secret, okay? I'm going to give you a spot in the room, and you're going to work on unscrambling my secret message. Start. Don't shut it out. Everyone needs to see. Be nice. No. Wait. Will. Okay, so you have Will. B. Okay, do you have one more puzzle to make? 
Yeah. Go ahead, figure that one out. Tune a new. Mrs. Call. So we still get to finish the year and we still get to do super fun things like this Friday. I'll tell you a little secret. This Friday we're planting I'm seeds. Miss. I'm going to miss you, but I wanted to let you know because we're going to be doing some end of the year. Don't make me cry. For one. actually going to show you this school too. I'm moving to a different state. The state I'm moving to is Nevada. So here's California and here is Nevada. It's right next door to California. And before the year is over, we're going to have things after school too. So there's going to be teacher parties after school. So I'm going to invite you to come with all of you. Stop making me cry. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Your parents will come. But it'll be like, it'll be like a pizza party. Hold on. It'll be like a pizza party in the park or something after school where we can hang out after school with your parents too, okay? Okay, I'll do more than one, okay? So there'll be more than one chance for you to come. And you know that even though, you know that even though Mrs. Call is moving away, your parents will have my phone number. Phone number. You know where to find me. And also my mom. I can text yeah, so you can still text me, you can still call me, and before you're stopped. You're right, you and before, you before my kindergartners, bef on, before you go to first grade next year, I'm going to call you the night before first grade and wish you good luck. And my first graders, I'm going to call you the night before second grade and wish you good luck, okay? So, do you remember what I, do you remember what I said um, last week about we still have 10 weeks together? Yeah! So we still have a long time together, huh? Yeah. We still have 10 weeks of fun things to do together. But I wanted to tell you what I was teaching next year and I wanted to tell you that I was moving and I love you. Do you want to see my school? Yes. Okay. Okay, here is what the school looks like. An elementary school. Uh, I'm like this school. Yeah, but the, instead of third, it goes to fifth. Do you want to go to that school with me? Yeah, okay. Am I leaving you this year? No. Would I ever leave you? No. No, because I love you too. Because I love you too much. But next year I won't be here. Does that mean you'll never speak to me ever again? No. No, you can still speak to me. Some of your, some of your parent, all of your parents have my number. Some of your parents know other places to find me, right? Okay, so does anybody have any other questions? No. You want to come there? Does it look fun? Yeah, it looks fun. Yeah, as fun as that school looks, I'm going to be missing you guys a lot because I love you so much. Please come on. 
What's your house going to look like? What? What's your house going to look like? Oh, you know what? Me and my husband have not picked out a house yet. We, over spring break, are going to drive and look for one. If I find one, I'll show you guys. What's your question? Yeah. You said it's perfect here with me. You're so sweet. The reason, the reason why I'm moving is because my husband got a new job. So that's why I can't stay. It's because my husband, John, he got a new job. I'm not leaving you just because. What's the job? His job is going to be working with computers. Like, like Mr. Well, e. Yeah, kind of like Mr. E. Class. What? Class. Yep, so no, no matter what, next year, when you're in first grade, you'll have a brand new teacher, which means one of the first grade teachers this year is going to be your teacher, and they're all wonderful. And my first graders here, <laughs> All of the second grade teachers, they're all wonderful teachers. So no matter who your teacher is next year, they're going to love you just as much as I do. And then I was like, okay, this is just really, really hard. And while my kids were like hugging me and telling me how much they're going to miss me, they were like making these signs on this paper. They said, Miss Call, are you keeping this paper? And I said, uh, yeah. And they were drawing all over it. And I just decided instead of the review math lesson that I had planned today, I just needed to let them process their emotions and just play, which is how kids process their emotions. So I said, we're doing free choice for the rest of the day, which really, it only gave them like an extra 45 minutes. So really isn't that long. And I had absolutely dropped a bomb on them. And I knew it was going to be hard, but I wanted to do it because, again, a lot of them, like with their parents, they'll watch my social media and I don't want them to hear from me in this video Miss Call's going to be in a new school next year. I want to be able to tell them face to face. So that's kind of the reasoning why I told them what I did. And during free choice, can I just show you guys why do you have to leave? Never leave. <laughs> Lots of little sweet, literally sweet cards. So I love you. She drew YouTube and her watching YouTube. Another card that says, don't move. Never, ever leave. We love you, Mrs. Call. We call to love you. Mm -hmm. Another picture of me. More hearts. I love you something. A little heart. Love you. A heart that this little boy said I need to take with him so that I will remember him. A picture of me. Oh, this is a... Oh, this is so sweet. This sweet girl put the date on this. And she said, Miss Call, you were my best teacher I have ever had so far. <laughs> With 2022 at the top. <laughs> um, we love you, Miss Call. Another little card. Rainbows. Another card. Never ever move. They're like framing their art. Like this is cardstock and this is normal paper. They like framed this picture for me. Um, a beautiful flower with a sign that again says don't move. Love you, Miss Call. You're the beautifulest Miss Call. You can understand. Right, like I have the sweetest class. And I know I know these kind of things can be really stressful for little people. Anytime you like tell them about like big life events and they're not sure how to process it. I had one student who ended up a few minutes later having an accident on himself, not one that typically does, and I just oh it's one of those things. It's just it's so hard. And me as a teacher, like my personality is very very loving. My, my window says, you are so loved because it's true. I care about my kids so much. So it's been a long day. I'm going to go home. I'm going to bake some bread. I'm going to get some rest, honestly, and come in tomorrow and hope that things just feel <laughs> back to normal because today, I wasn't expecting today to be this hard, but it was. Good morning. Happy Tuesday. I'm in the best mood. I did bake my bread last night and not great but for a beginner's first time and i don't think the recipe i used was like a beginner recipe because i never do <laughs> beginner recipes i avoid them i don't know why um i guess because i just have a lot of false confidence in myself but i did learn a lot through the process i was analyzing the crumb structure and like doing a lot of research on that and i think I'm pretty sure it was underproofed, but it might have been my starter. So I don't know. Next week's loaf, hopefully it will be better, but I did bring it today. And somebody, I was walking in with it and someone was like, Maylene, what are we going to do without you? Because I love to bake and bring things. Okay, actually my new principal texted me this morning. He's been sending me um, like school documents and things like that. And some people might think, oh, like I don't want to deal with next school year. Like I'm still in this, but me, I'd rather wrap my brain around 
everything that's going on especially since my new school has like a lot involved with it so he's been sending me schedules and meetings and all these sorts of things and it's really really helpful so on the agenda for this morning I don't even know thankfully it's not gonna be indoor recess today and that's all that matters <laughs> because yesterday it was and I feel like whenever we have indoor recess all day I just don't actually and it's true you don't like really get a break because the kids are in here so okay before I start I do want to check on Instagram because I put out a question box in my stories and I said, what do you want to see or hear about in the vlog this week? And I'm going to go through and look at some of those responses and see if I can answer any questions before I start my day with you guys. What do people want to see? Small group planning, math, and ELA. Okay, I'm not doing a ton of small group planning because I know what phonics skills that I'm teaching and then I just I just do it. So I don't, I don't have like a lot of planning going on right now. I'm mostly just working with words and then doing that same phonics skill in text and that's not something that I need to plan for right now. I used to be very, very like plan out every single thing before my lesson and now I just like know the main parts to do. So I'm not doing a lot of small group planning. Talk about the sunflowers. Okay, I can talk about that on Friday. Recipes. You know, I was looking back at my vlogs from last year when I taught kindergarten because I was looking at my sunflowers and how I did that whole process with them. And in all of those vlogs last year, I took you guys home and like cooked with you and hung out with John with you. And part of me misses that being in my vlogs, but then the other part of me is like, it's nice not to have all that extra stuff to edit. So I really need to know, is it something you guys like sprinkled in every now and then? Do you like it um, like week to week or do you just prefer the vlogs to be more teaching style? Cause I love, love, love the lifestyle mixed in, but it's just hard sometimes an explanation of your letter and number writing chance okay i can do that so the letter chance that i use like when you hear me say tall line down roll down for the letter h those are the peterson print rhythm chance i guess is it a chance i don't know but it's been really really helpful to me so i just googled peterson print rhythm and they have it for uppercase and for lowercase and i printed it out i it was a little bit hard to find google image searched Peterson Print Rhythm, but I love it. I think it's super helpful. The number chants, I I got inspiration for some of them, like around a tree, around a tree. That's the way you make a three. Like that one's been known for a long time. Um, all my number chants are tall and down and then you're done. That's the way you make a one, around and back on the railroad track. Two, two, around a tree, around a tree. That's the way you make a three. Down, then over, then down once more. That's the way you make a four. Short line down, roll around. Five has a top and then you stop. Six is roll around, then make a loop. Number six has a hoop seven is slide to the right then slant it down number seven wears a crown eight is make an s and close the gate that's the way you make an eight nine is first a circle then a line that's the way you make a nine and ten is a combination so those are the ones that i use <laughs> so write them down if you like it i need you to listen and if you're learning you are you need to sit on your Good. If your jackets are not on your body, they're in your cubby. Our book today, there you go, strong choice. Our book today is called Dandy. At the end of the word, why well, can say? You are, you are, you are. Good. Our book is called Dandy. And this book, when I taught kindergarten last year, it was one of their favorite books. So I'm really, really excited to read it with you. It's okay. That's you know why it's ripped because my class read it a lot last year. I'll fix it. I'll be really gentle with it too. Daddy spied something scary on his perfect lawn. He ran for his clippers. Oh gosh. But he was too late. Hi, Daddy. Sweetie, Daddy said, that's a weed. Hi, Daddy. Hi. Characters have problems. All right, what is Daddy's problem? Turn and tell your friend what's Daddy's problem. She really likes it. Good. So Daddy wanted to cut the weed, but his daughter, Sweetie, loves it. Now, how would you describe Daddy? Tired. Even more than tired. tired. He's Oh. Exhausted. exhausted. He's exhausted. Why is he trying to cut down the weed, though? Because, because he thinks he it's a weed. Sit on your bottom. Because he doesn't like it. Because he doesn't like it. Why? Why not? Because he, because he only likes grass. Because he only likes the grass, right? He said he had a perfect he lawn. Me. He couldn't wait. Oh. 
It's a picture of him and the flower, and the flower Charlotte. And they accidentally cut Charlotte. Flower. What do you think Sweetie is going to say or feel when she gets back? Turn and tell your friend, how is Sweetie going to feel? Yeah. 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 Turn. How is Sweetie gonna feel? Go ahead and tell me. Sad. Sad. Heartbroken. Heartbroken. Annoyed. Annoyed. Maybe it made me annoyed. He said, "They're dandy." Dandelions. They're dandelions. You got it, my friend. So dandelions start out as a little what? Sprout. Well, they do start out as a sprout, and they're then they weed? turn. Yeah, they're a weed that turns into this little flower, but eventually, oops. Ah. See, even Miss Call rips her pages on accident. It's okay. I didn't mean to. Yep, My they blow and they scatter through the wind. Yeah, and more pop. And up. more. Then they move to the characters. characters have grown. Characters changed. Change. Did Daddy change from the beginning of the story to the yeah. end? Yes. He did change. In the beginning, he wanted to get rid yeah. of Charlotte. And at the end, he made... Predictions. Predictions he made more. He made more shots. We're going to talk about this more. Book tracker. Oh, book tracker. We need the book tracker. All right. After 77 comes 78. 78 books this year. You guys are incredible. Og. 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 Keep your eyes on the letter. App. App. Like in the word cat. cat. Let's spell cat. Ready? C A T. Cat. What else can we spell? Doggy. Bat. Bat. Like a baseball bat. bat. Ready? Let's spell it. Oh. What letters first in bat? B A T. Bat. Let's do it. B -a what sound? A, -a. a says a -a. A, -a. a a a. Ready? Say rip. Rip. Roller coasters ready. R -i What's at the top? I I says I I I I. Nice job. Say dot. dot. Roller coasters ready. D -a. A what sound? A -a. O says a -a. A -a. Stretch hat. At. Switch it. Eight. Good. Say dim. Stretch it. D. I. Superhero. D. I'm. A nice job. Say tap. Let's stretch it. T. A. Superhero. T. A. Okay, it's after school. I'm gonna keep it short and sweet. Today went, I actually think, really well. Like, they were a little bit crazy in the morning, but when we went into centers, it was awesome. I got a lot of footage of them in centers because I would have my students at my table um, start their books or start Ram Magic or start something else, and I would walk around and check what the other students were doing, which may have helped just a little bit if we're being honest. Fuzz on you. There we go. Um, but they did a really awesome job in centers. I was really proud of a lot of what I was seeing from them. Nice job. Good. What's that word? Cord. Cord. Nice job. Hips. Hips. Nice job. First, we went to the pound to get my cat. Our story today is going to have Mommy E a lot of times. Okay? Do you see Mommy E in any of these words? So instead of saying uh, this letter is going to say you. Let's sound it out. Ready? Mm, you, s, muse, the, 
Mm -hmm. I see that mommy eats, so I'm gonna get my mouth ready. Mm -hmm. You oh mule. Do you know what a mule is? It's some sort of animal. It's some sort of animal. It is. It's kind of like a donkey. Say mule. It's a little hard to say. Mm you oh mule. Mule. Those are the bones. Dr. Tentacle has captured the bear. So Sunday's was great. We came back. Um, we started math and I remember someone asking in my question box, like, how do you transition from one thing to another? And it can be hard especially teaching two classes, but if you don't have a prep time or some space to separate activities, I just start them off with a go noodle. So before we started math today, and I did make it to where we would be doing shapes in kindergarten and first grade at the same time because why wouldn't I do that? So we went straight from reading groups to math and math today, it took a lot more of me like setting things up for them to do stations sort of around the room. I put on Jack Hartman shapes. I think we did two Jack Hartman shapes <laughs> videos. It was also kind of front loading the information while I set everything up. We're gonna do a little Jack Hartman video on shapes while I set up our stations, okay? Hello. You're learning you are participating. That means everyone is participating. And today was mostly a shape like exploration day. So my kinders, I didn't even explicitly teach them anything. They did have the Jack Hartman, but, um, and they're familiar with a lot of the basic ones. However, today was just a building day for them. So I got some clips of what kinder was working on and we just rotated through the centers. And then first grade, they knew a lot of the basics. We mostly just talked about, um, the attributes of the shape, so square has four equal sides, four vertices. We did talk about what a vertice was. I kept it very, very simple for them. It is a simple, pretty simple concept and they got it just like that. So we worked on that. We're only doing a couple of them today, but we're gonna talk about their sides and their vertices. So first, what is the shape? Square. It is a square and we know it's a square because it has how many sides? Four sides. Four sides. One, two, three, four sides. How many sides? Four. Four sides. There are also four vertices. Do you know what a vertice is? Yes. What do you think a vertice is? It's where the sides meet. So if I was building a square, if I was building a square with four markers, I would put one side and another side. Where these two sides meet, this corner, it's called a vertice. Say vertice. Vertice. We're going to be making them with um, Play-Doh and toothpicks and counting the vertices, but today we're just talking about how many. I know, it's so cool. Okay, so on a square, I know, it's going to be fun. Help me count the vertices. Ready? One, two, three, four. Four vertices. Is this a vertice? No. Is this a vertice? No. No, this is the side. Ready? Short sides and two long sides. Trapezoid. Oi, oi, oi. Trapezoid. It's kind of like a triangle, but it's not. Kind of. It's kind of like a triangle, it's just it doesn't have a point. At the top, right? But we're going to talk about how we can actually use these to make these. Okay, so count in your brain how many vertices. Show me with your fingers when you know. Three vertices. Three, one, two, three. How many sides? 
three. Beautiful job. Count in your brain how many sides. Show me when you're ready. One, two, three, four. Four sides. Count your vertices. Four vertices, okay? You're going to be sorting these shapes and these shapes. And while some of my friends are sorting, we're going to be building with Play-Doh and toothpicks, okay? So my friends who are going to be sorting first, you're going to be working You're going to be working with one partner. After you've sorted all of them, raise your hand so I can check. And then I had a group come to my back table over here, sorting some shapes, again, just discrimination. And then I worked with a group with toothpicks and Play-Doh and actually talked about like the vertices. I would ask them to build things different ways. So some of them I would say, okay, build a square. Some of them I would say, okay, build me a shape with four sides and four vertices. Other times I might say, I think I filmed it, <laughs> but okay, take one side and one vertice away, make a new shape and do it like that to kind of extend on it. So those are also things that I don't plan. They just kind of happen in the moment. And I think that's where some of of my best teaching is is in the moment do you understand your job yes you're gonna work together right yes we are. is one person gonna do all the work no nope. nope I want you both to talk about each one when you pull it out and talk about why it's this or why it's this okay do you understand what to do yeah. when you pull one out I want you to talk about why it goes here or here, and then you can just put it next to it, okay? I want you to try to use rubber bands to build this shape. Square. How many sides? Four. Four equal sides. How many vertices? Four. Four vertices. Use your toothpicks, and you're gonna take a little ball, and this is going to be your vertice. If you've already made a square, try to make a different shape. You take away one vertice and one side to make a shape. Square. Okay, one vertice. One vertice. Now I'm going to have to take away. Yeah. Alright, I want you to do the side with the square. Count your sides and circle your vertices. It went really well. I will say it was hard to kind of move around with everything because there was so much going on but i think tomorrow will be a little bit better because they know what the stations are now the shapes are just going to change so what they're doing in each station will just change but it will be the same activity so i really enjoyed that i also these and you guys know these i've been talking about them for a while lots of prep these little wooden slices are linked in my amazon but i like these so much better than the paper ones they're not getting messed up they're not getting lost they're easier for the kids to manipulate it was it was wonderful so I really, really love using these. And I was talking about on my Instagram stories just a minute ago how I want to incorporate these little wooden chips into more kinds of centers. So not replacing obviously every laminated thing with these, but some things I feel like I can incorporate onto these and it will just be better. So, oh, one of my <laughs> kids made me this hat and I wore it for a good majority of the day, but she made this hat for me this morning. It says, I think it says, we love you. They were still pretty sad about the news from yesterday, but today was so much better. One little girl, she saw me um, when I picked her up in the morning and she said, Miss Call, I feel much better. I was like, I'm really glad to hear that. So anyways, I have um, a couple things to run home and do. John might be late coming from work. I'm also going to actually a couple of my students baseball game today because my students are on different baseball teams, but they're playing each other today. So I told them I would come. Hello, good morning. Today is Wednesday, which means I have morning duty. So I'm gonna be leaving you in just a minute. Um, oh my goodness. Okay, so the last night was so fun. I had a couple of kids who I went to go see play baseball and they were so sweet. They were constantly like waving at me. One of my little boys, he walked out and he said, hi, Miss Call. Like he was so excited to see me. And uh, my parents were like, I'm so glad you came. Like it means the world to them. And I'm just like, oh, so sweet. And it makes it even harder to think about the, I'm not gonna, I always do that to myself. I'm like, but now I think about this and then I get really sad. Okay, so, so today is gonna be a sort of continuation of the things we were doing yesterday, reading Dandy, doing shapes. I know today's gonna be a great day. Okay, it's the end of the day. I'm not gonna spend too much time talking to you. 
but uh, today was a really, really good day. And then they did a retail. They retold the story, and since I didn't have anchor chart paper to actually make the anchor chart, I was like, you know what, guys? We're going to do the best we can, and I wanna challenge you to do it without the pictures. And a lot of them were really successful. So the ones who were not successful and needed that extra support, I just walked around and helped them, but it was really cool because they were like, Miss Call, I can't do it. There's no way I can do it. And most of them did. So that was encouraging. Sister, we can add colorful details to expand our sentence like a rainbow. Say expand with colorful details. Okay, the first one is an adjective. Say adjective. Describe. First grade. I picked the flowers. That's a good sentence. Can we make it better? Yeah. We can add colorful details to make a rainbow sentence. We can add colorful details to make a rainbow sentence. Okay, so let's see if we can add an adjective to our sentence. Let's read it. I picked the something flowers. You can choose what kind. You could say pink. You could say, I picked the small flowers. I picked the red flowers. I picked the big flowers. Now we're going to add a yellow detail. We're going to say when. Say when. So you're going to tell me a time. When did you pick your flowers? We could say at sunset we could say in the morning in the morning we could say at night time at lunch time i picked the sunflowers at the park because i was bored good for this person i picked the red flowers at home i picked the sunflowers yesterday i picked the pink flowers in my front yard because i love flowers Yesterday, I picked the big flowers in my yard because it was fun. When we went to centers, I didn't film a lot of small groups. I'm really trying to focus on math for you guys this week. But for small groups, I did a lot of one-on-one -on -one and recorded and put it in their class dojo, kind of let their parents know where they are. I'm really, really good about parent communication and letting parents know like how their children are doing in school. And I love sending videos on class dojo of the one-on-ones because the parents can see how I explain certain things or how I walk them through, how I help problem solve with them. So that was nice. Um, I'm not sure if I got any footage of small, of center time. Maybe I did. I don't think so. But they did do a really awesome job in centers. And I was thinking, oh, they might get like a bonus cookie today. And then when they cleaned up, they ruined all of it. So I'm like, oh, sorry. Maybe we'll try again tomorrow. Went to lunch, came back in from recess. We had to practice how to walk in a line again because whenever they come back from recess, they're crazy. So we practiced walking in a line. They came inside, did a couple of those Jack Hartmans to get me transitioned into math, set everything up for them. And then my kinders did some math stations. And my first graders, we worked on building composite shapes. So I'm gonna show you a few clips of what that looks like. For me, I think I've said it already, but the big thing is letting them explore and manipulate and practice things first. Some of the things that I was asking them to do, I wasn't sure if they would be able to do them or not, but I always like to challenge my kids and see, hey, can they meet the standard? Can they surpass my expectations? Can they try something that's hard? If they are attempting something that's hard, do they give up or are they empowered to find a new solution? It was really cool because a lot of them came into some of the shape challenges that I was giving them with pretty low confidence like I would tell them a specific make a shape with three sides three vertices you need to use this many shapes see if you can do it and they were like miss call there's no way I can do that but they ended up doing it. it just took some of them a little bit longer so all of that hands-on exploration really really helps leading into math lessons so my first graders started with that with some hands-on exploration so while my kinders are exploring and my first graders are exploring with me I'm walking around the room kind of checking in with everybody but then after that my aide comes back inside so she can pull a kinder group so my kinders cleaned up stations my first grade cleaned up what they were doing first grade grabbed a math book kindergartners grabbed a write the room so while I'm working with my first grade on a math book my kinders were doing right the room and some of my kinders were getting pulled to work with my aid and this is how I teach a combo class lots of moving parts but I think I've really gotten a flow and figured it out since yesterday so that helped big composite 
a composite, it's another way to say it when you compose. When you compose something, you make or you create something. So we already know that shape is a triangle. I can use another shape to create a bigger triangle. This is your challenge. You are going to take one green triangle. Say one green triangle. And you are going to try to make a bigger triangle by adding only one shape. I want you to spread out. Do it. <laughs> Can you make it bigger? Ooh, okay, I like what I'm seeing. Very interesting ideas. Solving happening. You're so close. How many vertices does the triangle have? Three. So we need. We have one, two. We need another vertice at the top. How can you do that? You problem solved. There's another way to do it too. Ooh, so close. You were really close when you had this shape right here. You need to figure out how to make this a triangle. So why don't you take your finger and pretend to draw a triangle? So you need to point there and do you need to close it? Does that help you visualize what you need? What do we need right here to close it? Look down. Try your shapes. Try fitting shapes in. I'm setting your next timer. Do you know what to do? You this did. Like a mega triangle. That's awesome. I want you to put down a trapezoid in front of you. Put down a trapezoid in front of you. I want to see if you can put shapes on top of your trapezoid to build a trapezoid. Can you put shapes on top? Stack it. One way to do it. Nice job. Can you come up with another way? I love that. Yeah, you did it. Nice job. Keep persisting. What shape are you making? A triangle. A triangle. Show me. Of them together and make a little thinking. Yeah. Good, a rectangle. Can you use your rolling pin to roll out your dough too? A square. Square. Hi. What are you making? Show me. Can you make a bigger triangle? Can you make it bigger? You are close. You need four shapes and you have three shapes. How else can you build this? Close. Why don't you try stacking to see which shapes make this shape? Now how can you put it together to make a triangle? Mm -hmm. Interesting technique. Good, mark them so I see. Mark them so I know you counted them. Nice job. Also, if you didn't notice, I got a little necklace from one of my kids, and it's like a little choker. It's like a stretchy, super fun little necklace that she made me, and I was like, I love it. Hello, good morning. Welcome to my dark cave. This morning was absolutely crazy because the fog was so thick. It felt, I was talking to Emma, it felt like driving in a parallel dimension. So today's Thursday. I was editing my vlog um, for last week, last night, and I posted it and it went up this morning, but last Thursday was rough. And you can't even really tell in the vlog because I, I didn't capture the moments where things were like really hard because it would just spontaneously happen or I'd stop recording and then something would happen. But I'm hoping today is not a repeat of that. And we're supposed to plant sunflower seeds tomorrow. And I'm like, it is not, this weather is not ideal. <laughs> I need springtime, I need the warmth. Daddy spied something scary on his perfect lawn. He ran for his clippers, but he was too late. Hi, Daddy. Sweetie, Daddy said, that's a weed. A flower, sweetie said. Her name is Charlie. She's my friend. Daddy hoped his friends wouldn't notice.
you have to do. Daddy did. He tried during book time. Tip, 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 tip. Hmm? Ha, ha, ha. But sweetie was there. Once again, Daddy hoped his friends wouldn't notice. They did get serious. Daddy got serious. Like a, like a, like a, like a. But sweetie was always there. Hi, Daddy. Until it was time for. Bye, Daddy. Take care of Charlotte. I will, Daddy said. He couldn't wait. We meet your doom. Screech. But Daddy spied something else on his once perfect lawn. Sweeties. I can't do it, Daddy cried. We know they were Daddy's too. Then Daddy's snips slipped. No! Daddy wailed. Charlotte! They knew what they had to do. Everyone hoped Sweetie wouldn't notice she did daddy sweetie cried there's something wrong with charlotte look daddy looked at his lawn he looked at his little girl he chose it'll be okay daddy said watch why did you whistle i didn't mean to Hi, Daddy, sweetie said. Meet Charlotte, two and Charlotte, three and Charlotte, four and sweetie beamed. Aren't they beautiful? Daddy smiled. Yes, sweetie, he said. They're dandy. Baby lion, sweetie, was really excited about her Charlotte dandelion. You're going to write about a time that you were super excited. Well, you, you, Every you single one. Know. All right, I want you to think. Private think time to yourself. Does that mean you talk? No. Private think time. Think about a time you were really excited. My turn. Your turn. I was really excited when I found out I was going to be teaching kindergarten and first grade this year. I was so excited. When were you excited? When you got your baby brother. I love that you guys are using complete sentences. I was excited when I got my baby brother. Awesome job. When were you excited? My t -t turn. <laughs> Are you just trying to earn all these dojo points today, aren't you? Wow. Yes. Okay, see you. Eyes on the board. Eyes on the board. Okay. Now that you know what you're going to write about, we are going to practice writing a complete sentence. Say complete sentence. Complete So when you were talking, I heard some of you say, I was excited when... And then you told me, and that's exactly what we're going to do in the writing. We're going to do the first part, our sentence stem together. So together, you're going to help me write. I was excited when I got my video game. You did, so you had the. I played this game at my home, but I didn't. Really? Because I just invented it. Here's how we play it. Well, I'm going to say a word, and we're going to stretch and count the sounds. When we count the sounds, that's how many times we're going to pass our sweet tooth. Okay. Ready? Say fish. Fish. Let's clap it. Fish. fish. Wait, hold on. Not syllables. Sounds. Ready? Fish. Oh, sorry. Let's do it like this. Fish. How many? Three. So watch me. Pass it one time. Wait, point. You're going to pass it, pass it, pass. And we have three sounds, so pass it one more time. Ready? Okay, next word. Swim. Let's count the sounds. One. Wait. Wa, 
Okay, so wait, pass it. One, two, one, two, three. Freeze. What did you get? What do I get? Here, here. Okay, ready? You may open your candy and you may eat it right now. Oh, well. It's different, I'm not even touching it. Because it's a magnet. Okay, then you should use your teacher voice. Next one. super dark but that's okay so my friend Megan sent me pictures of what uh, the classroom kind of like the layout what the classroom layout is at my new school our new school technically I was working last night in procreate because I was just so excited <laughs> to have an idea of what the classroom might look like the principal said I could paint if I <laughs> he said if I do a good job and I have these cute ideas that I want to do um, and so I'm really really excited because I've never painted a classroom and I feel like that is going to make just such a difference you know like it'll really feel I don't know just like mine so it's funny to be at the end of the year trying to like make it through the end of the year but yet still be so excited about starting at a new school it's probably hard to hear me but I want one wall to be like terracotta colored and I think just this small wall over here and then I want like a, a green kind of like sagey green wall and then this back wall I don't know if you can see um, very very subtle like even more subtle than this contrast but there's a little a little sneak peek you put them on the ring see the little notch oh yeah so you put them like oh so we have to find all the match ones maybe they don't all have to match i want you to experiment different ways to make them okay Just by cutting it use it as a cutter Okay, I'm gonna cut this into a triangle and see if it works. Into triangles? Maybe. What do you think will be left after all the triangles? Um, maybe three pieces. Let's see. Oh, triangle! That is satisfying! It's what? It's satisfying. It is? Great. Okay. I love how you used one, two, three shapes to make this. So it's almost the same as this one, one, two, three shapes. I'm thinking of a shape that has four sides and two sides are long, two sides are short. Rectangle. I'm thinking of a shape that has four long sides. Square, because they're all the same. I'm thinking of a shape with three sides. Triangle. What are you guys figuring out? We use different ones to make this shape. That's cool. How many orange ones equal a red one? Um, three. Three, okay. And four and two. How can you break them apart? Next one is cross it. They are together and these are one, two, three, four, five. And you can also cut like that. Hello, I had to double check that today's actually Friday because it doesn't feel like it. Um, I did 
touch up my curls this morning and I have to say this little curling iron that I have it's linked in my Amazon storefront account and you can find it in the links in my description box I touched them up a tiny tiny bit and this curling iron does it so fast so it literally took five minutes to touch up these curls I'm obsessed I told my kids yesterday at dismissal some of them already left but I had told them don't forget tomorrow's backwards day and I sent a message to the parents with a winky face saying today was backwards day I don't think some of them know that it is actually an April Fool's Day prank but I told my kids to dress up backwards and I'm gonna tell them when they come in that when they look in our mirror their clothes will look normal and on the mirror I wrote April Fool's so I'm really excited to see how they handle that one um, and if they're good sports about it then we'll do brownies after lunch and I am actually gonna bring them brownies but I'll probably bring it next week so today's gonna be a fun day um, it's Friday we're planting seeds got a lot going on ready for the day what a Friday oh my gosh things have been absolutely crazy today my kids needed a lot of reminders but you know we had a really fun day so all my April Fool's pranks they thought were funny um, the word search they were really I guess they thought it was just a really hard word search for a long time until someone was like I think you're pranking us and then they got it and then some of them were still looking for the words <laughs> that was funny I had them sign in but I like flipped their names upside down so they had to like write their name upside down and backwards and then like my director and my helpers pictures I just put upside down um, the wear your clothes back wear your clothes backwards <laughs> mirror trick that I played on them was funny but I think it was funnier to me than it was to them. the bad seeds some of you may have read it and after lunch we're gonna plant sunflower seeds as well so because we're not doing our read aloud this morning we have to do our spring word search if you're not sure how to do it just do the best you can you're just looking for these letters that are in the word got it good. get it got it, got it okay okay what is our voice level to start yeah. yeah we need private think time we need to be able to focus to find these words Thumbs up if you found a word. All right, you may talk to your friends. Yes. Is this some kind of trick again? <laughs> trick. The trick to me. That would be ridiculous. Oh, ridiculous. Are you playing a prank on us? Me? So you pranked us with an air blade ticket a long time ago, so I don't know how you're going to do that again. Uh, I think, oh, yeah, you, you pranked us with an air blade ticket. April, April Fool's! <laughs> Technically, partitioning shapes into equal shares is a first grade standard but the brownies that I made were for kindergarten and first grade and so I was like kindergartners you're gonna sit in on a first grade lesson today and they were excited and we talked about how to divide the brownies equally and I always try to get them to say that word equal um because that's what we're going for so I just introduced it today I think I have some clips from that what have we been studying in math yes um, shapes. Shapes. shapes we've been learning all about Shapes. Kindergartners are working on identifying, and first graders have been working with discriminating, telling which shape is which, different ways that you can make this shape. Yesterday, first graders, you practiced cutting up shapes in your Play-Doh Center, right? Yeah. Okay, so we talked about different ways to cut shapes. Kindergartners are going to stay with the first graders today during math because the brownies I brought are for first grade, but I still want kinder to have some. So, kindergarten, are you okay with learning a little first grade yeah. today? Yeah. A little first grade math? Yeah, Are you okay? Yeah. My brownie pan is in the shape of a what? Rectangle! Because it has two 
Long side and two short side. Good. This side and this side. Do they ever touch? No. Never. Not like a trapezoid, right? All right. So this pan of brownies looks exactly like my pan over there. I had to make mine a little bit thinner for you guys. We have to share brownies with the whole class. So you guys have to help me figure out a way to cut the brownies in a way that is fair for everyone. Okay, are you ready? Yes. I'm gonna show you on the board how I'm gonna cut them and you tell me if it's fair, like this. Is that a fair way to cut them? No. Turn and tell your friend why. My turn. I heard a lot of good things in that short time I gave you to tell a friend why this is not fair. What do you think? perfect way to say it a piece like this is really what big. this is a really big piece of brownie and a piece like this is really small. small so they're not the same right they're different all right so I'm gonna cut them again and you tell me if this way is better ready okay private think time is this way better private think time friends is this way better no. Okay, thumbs up if this is a good way I should cut the brownies. No, thumbs no. down if it's a bad way I should cut the brownies. Okay, so we're thinking this is not the best way to cut it so everybody gets a fair piece. Um, who can tell me why cutting my brownies like this isn't fair? Yeah, the bottom pieces are kind of big and the middle pieces are kind of small. They're not the same. same. Do you know another word for same? They're not different. They're what? Hold on, they're not what? Equal. They're not Equal. equal. I need to make my pieces equal so everyone gets the same amount. I'm not perfect, but if I did it perfectly in the middle, then I would have how many equal pieces? Four equal pieces. One, two, three, four. Now I have one, two, three, four, five, six pieces, and they're not the same. So what should I do to this side? The same thing. The same thing. Let's count how many now. Big. They were what? Big. They were big. And the more times we cut it, the more times they get, bigger. They get smaller. So the more pieces that we add, the smaller our shape is going to be. But it's still the same pan of brownies, right? We still started with brownies. How many? Let's see. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight shapes. What is something else I could do? What Cross. Across. Across. And then I brought out the brownies, you know, the classic brownie papers, these lovely things. And um, one girl was really upset, but it was funny because she said, my stomach hurts, I'm gonna save it for later. And then she was the one who was upset when they weren't real brownies, because she really wanted them, but they are getting some next week. That was all of the craziness. What did I make you? Brownies. I made you brownies. Here you go. I'm sorry, I burnt, I burnt some of the brown. April Fools. April Fools. So, Miss Call did play a little trick on you today, but you want to know, you want to know the good news. Good news is, next Friday, I am actually bringing you brownies. All right, I love you so much. I'll give you a figure out You forgive me? I forgot. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're sweet. How do I get hugs? Not even for making you brownies. For today, we also did our little sunflower project, which came out so cute. I'll show you the picture of inspiration. I think I just screenshotted it, but here's the inspiration. Say dip. Dip. Press. Drag. Clean it! Dip, press, drop. That's how ours came out. I am obsessed. So I just did brown paint, Q-tip painting. I drew like a little circle for them. You can kind of tell if you look close, but you can't really see. For them to dot around the circle, they filled it in. And then I told them to dip their paintbrush, dip, 
press and drag it, but don't drag it off the paper, just drag it to the edge so I could have a little white space to cut out. And then my aide had the wonderful idea to fold the leaves so the leaves would look more fun, more 3D. So they came out super cute. The nice thing is, is that they all look nice. Even the ones who are like normally, oh, my, my painting doesn't look good. Even theirs came out super sweet. So I'm gonna show you what they all look like. And we planted seeds too. So here's the aftermath of that. Very messy. Um, when you're done, don't squeeze it, it'll break. When you're done, it'll be on the side so you know which cup is yours. But we're gonna use it to make a hole in the middle. So I'm gonna stick it, watch, in the middle. I'm not gonna go all the way down. I'm gonna go like halfway down. I'm gonna stick it in and I'm gonna do this. You're gonna stick it and try to make a hole like this. Just wiggle it a little bit. Go ahead and make a hole. Good, stick it in the middle, scoot it down, make a big hole, good. Yep. Good, pull it out, you should see a hole. I see a hole. Push the seat down in. Good, and put another one on top. Push it down in there, good job. Put all your seats in there. These are in there, watch me. I'm gonna take my finger and gently, we have to tuck them in. So you're just gonna push a little bit of soil and fill in your hole. Fill in your hole, cover your hole. Good, cover it up. Say good night, seeds. Good luck. All right, I want you to dump the rest of the soil that I'm gonna give you. You're gonna dump this on top. Stay there. On top? Yeah. That's, that's a big bag of soil. Top. Nice job. Nice and careful. Good. I forgot how funny it was to plant. I never did it. Yeah. Well, we're doing I it. I forgot right. how funny All right, now I'm going to give you your spray bottle. You're going to spray it really good on the top, okay? Spray, spray. Squeeze a bunch of times. Stick it in the side. On the, oh, not in the middle. On the very edge of it. Yep, against the cups. Let's get down in there. Stick, stick, stick. Stick it. How are you doing? Let me see. Stop. Bye. Nice job. Now you can stick your stick on the side of the cup. Good job. You spray it. Bye bye. Bye bye. Great job. Okay, our new anchor charts for the past few weeks are finally hung up. And we have Dandy, which with Dandy, we just talked about me an idea. A little bit obnoxiously bright but that is all for this week hopefully i remembered to show you everything if you have questions about anything in this vlog you can always leave a comment down below it's super helpful if you ask questions in the comment section because i can answer it for everyone but hopefully you enjoyed this video if you did make sure you give it a thumbs up click subscribe down below to join the family and i will see you in the next one